This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this chapter, we'll look in depth in the different vector tools inside of Motion. Essentially, all vector tools have the same options. The difference is how you begin. We have shape options, pen tools for drawing straight lines and geometric curves, and the paint stroke tool, essentially a free form tool. Now before we begin, let's move into the preferences, press command comma on your keyboard, move to the project tab, and make sure create layers at start of project is turned on. Also, hide the layers pane and the timing pane. Let's begin with the paint stroke tool. The paint stroke tool is one tool that you'll either want the inspector or the heads up display turned on before drawing anything. So turn on the heads up display and you can see options for the paint stroke tool. You can choose the brush color, its width, if you're using a Wacom tablet, the pen pressure and pen speed effect, whether or not it will be written on, smoothing, and the shape style. For now, if you have anything besides basic airbrush selected, change it here to basic airbrush. Some important options here that I want you to be aware of is the right on option. If we turn on right on, move the heads up display out of the way, the speed at which we draw our shape will be drawn on inside of motion. For instance, if you try to sign your name, motion will now draw on that shape. Play back your project. And motion draws it on at the same speed that you drew it with the mouse. We also have smoothing turned on. If we select our transform tool and double click on our signature, we can see all the different vector points. We can then manipulate these points if we need. For now, delete the layer. Select it in the mini timeline and press delete. Select the paint stroke tool one more time. This time turn off smoothing. Write your name again. And now choose the transform tool and double click. You can now see there are much more points associated with our signature. Most of the time you'll want to keep smoothing turned on. Once again, delete your layer, select it in the mini timeline and press delete. Select the paint stroke tool one more time. Turn off right on, but turn on smoothing. As we can see, there are many shape styles for our brushes. If you click the drop down menu, you can see how many different styles there are for the paint stroke tool. These will apply to any shape as well, as long as it doesn't have a fill. Let's take a look at how one of these work. Let's choose ants. Draw any shape. As you can see, your shape went away. Jump your playhead back to the beginning of your project and play it back. As you can see, the ants animate on and animate off. Certain styles have animations built into the presets. To modify this stroke, Click the eye in the heads up display. This immediately takes you to the inspector, shape tab, style tab. From here, we can see our shape has an outline, its brush type is an image, and the brush source is the ants.mov. At any time, we can change the shape style at the top of the inspector. As you can see, this shape style does not have an animation built in. For now, let's create our own brush. From here, change the brush type to solid. We can change the color, the width, the opacity, how the corners are interpolated, how the stroke starts, and how it ends. You can also change where the start point begins and where the stroke ends. As you may notice, these can be animated. We'll look at animation a little bit later in behaviors. If we use a geometric shape, such as a rectangle, we have a fill 
and an outline. The last option in outlines is the order. We can choose if the outline occurs over the fill or under the fill. For now, I'll delete this layer. With my transform tool, I'll reselect my shape. As you can see in the inspector, the stroke and advanced options are grayed out. These options are only for airbrush options. Airbrushed shapes are made up of things called dabs. And the first option we can see here is spacing for the dabs. If I turn this down, we now have a solid line. If I turn up the width, we can see how those dabs are affecting our shape. If you want the light up laser look for your shape, turn on additive blend. Now anytime the dabs overlap, it creates an additive blend adding the colors together, creating a brighter color at those intersections. Choose the stroke tab and change the stroke color mode to color over stroke. This creates a gradient throughout our stroke. Return to style. Make sure we have a large enough width. Turn up the spacing. And finally, under brush profile, drag away the last gradient tab. This will give us a solid stroke and we can see the individual dabs. If you turn on reverse stacking, you can see it changes the way the dabs are stacked on top of each other. Back in the brush profile, click towards the end to create another tab and drag the opacity down to zero. This gives us more of an airbrushed look. Again, turn on additive blend and turn down the spacing. Return to the stroke tab. We have options for color repetition, which can be animated, spacing over time. All parameters can be reset by hitting the arrow in the upper right hand corner. A cool feature of stroke is found at the bottom under jitter. The jitter parameter defines how closely the dabs link to the original stroke. There's also an option for jitter over stroke. This way your stroke can start solid and then jitter towards the end. Select the advanced tab. The advanced tab allows you to choose how the pin speed and pin pressure affect your stroke. If you are not using a Wacom tablet, you will not be able to use these options. You can, however, use the dynamic options. Select dynamics and turn on dynamics. From here, you can choose the life of your dabs. Right now we're set to a thousand. If we set this down to a lower number, let's say four, and play back our project, the dabs disappear about four seconds in because the life is set to about four and a half. If we drag this down lower, they'll disappear earlier. Now keep this set to at least 10. With life randomness, dabs will disappear in a random order. I'll stop playback, jump back to the beginning of the project, and turn off life randomness. The dabs are moving away because of the speed parameter. We turn this down, the dabs barely move, but give us a little bit of motion. We can also set the speed randomness. Random dabs will move faster than other dabs. For now, I'll keep this at zero. You can also turn on spin for the dabs. You may not see this in effect if your dabs are circles. As a reminder, you only get the stroke and advanced tabs if you're using the airbrush.